Hi YouTube family, Lisa A. Romano here, the ACOA Life Coach, coming to you today to talk about thought forms. Thought forms. It didn't sound right the first time I said that. Anyway, so let's talk about what is really going on inside an ACOA's mind. A couple of things that are universal uh, for all of us is that we are really adults that are reacting like we're three, um, or four, or five, or six, or seven. And that's not our fault. Um, the reason we do that is because we've been stunted emotionally. Because only adults who've been able to own themselves and know who they are can be who they are inside adult dynamics. And so those of us who have been stunted emotionally because we were never allowed as children to connect to self because of alcoholism or addiction or because our mother was a narcissist or our father was a narcissist, or an alcoholic, or a drug addict, or just aloof, or mentally ill, depressed, bulimic, anorexic, you name it. There is full of anxiety. I mean, there are so many reasons as to why children are unable to connect to self due to uh, a, a parent's issue. So if you have a parent who's suffering from depression, it's all about them. They're stuck in their head. I'm not knocking the parent who's got depression. I'm just speaking to the ACOA child who unfortunately is the child of that person who has been abandoned and has no clue as to what's wrong in their life now as an adult. So a couple of things happen. So, you know, we can we can have great empathy for our parents as adults, like we're adults now, right? So I'm going to be 50, so I can look back and say, I have great compassion for my mom and my dad because they had horrible life experiences. But that doesn't mean I wasn't messed up because they had horrible life experiences. And that doesn't mean I don't have a right to be angry at some point in time because of what happened to me. So we have to understand that anger is part of this journey and it's and anger is just like joy. It's just a th it's just a form of energy. That's all it is. So People, therapists included, get hung up on telling we ACOAs that we shouldn't be angry or that we should let go of the anger. or they, It's like nonsense. Or, or I love when someone says, um, you know, you should not feel that way, Lisa. That's like telling me not to have green eyes. Well, I do. Now what? I'm angry. I'm pissed off. So what? What does that mean? I'm not going to go kill the dog because I'm pissed off. I'm just being pissed off right now. And if you let me be pissed off, then I won't be so pissed off because you're telling me I don't have a right to be pissed off. So I'm going to tell you a little story and then I'm going to get to the drawing that I made to, to help drive the point home. So I got engaged when I was 21. Stupid. I got married when I was 23. Stupid. I did not know what the hell I was doing and I didn't know who the hell I was. Okay. I thought I did, but that's when I was below the veil of consciousness. Okay. Now looking back, you know, right over my shoulder through the jagged peephole that is self-awareness because it hurts when you get humble and you look over to, at the mess you made. Now I can understand that I did not have any, any clue as to what I was doing and I was purely seeking a sense of self in someone else because I did not receive that sense of self from my mom or my dad. And so what did I do? I attracted an energy being that was very much like my mom and hoped that in that relationship, unconsciously, he would help me complete this sense of self thing this by giving me validation and it didn't work it didn't work at all it fell apart so anyway I understand that now and uh, I am now it's my journey it's, it's, on, it's my goal on my journey to help encourage other ACOAs to figure this stuff out because once you do like your life completely shifts like every day dramatically it's awesome awesome so never give up okay so Anger is appropriate. So I'm going to tell you what I did. And, and, and it's like almost like use it as a social experiment. So I have, I have my first child when I'm 24. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can. Okay. But I made a lot of mistakes. So I would say things to him like my mother said to me. I would say things like, you shouldn't feel that way. You shouldn't be angry. You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, be, you shouldn't say that to your sister. You shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. What's wrong with you? Okay, now I have a 25-year-old son, soon to be 26-year-old son, who has a few issues, because he's working on them, that um, he should not have. And I absolutely know that I 
created or helped create. His dad also helped create a lot of anxiety in him. I own that. There's nothing I could do about it right now except encourage him to keep seeking truth and to apologize and ask for forgiveness and tell him I love him and, and, and just beg him to understand that um, I didn't know. I didn't know what I know now. And um, he's awesome about it, okay? Um, now, I have a third child who I had when I was awake, well, more awake. And so these were the types of conversations I had with her. So, for instance, she's four years old, and I'm not kidding you when she says this to me. Mommy, I'm so mad at you. I'm so mad at you. But this time, the mommy that I was then says, why are you mad at mommy? And she says, you said we were going to have ice cream after dinner, and we didn't. Now, I have to go to bed, and I know you're not going to let me have ice cream before I go to bed, and I'm mad at you. So I said, I would be mad at me too if I was you. It's okay that you're mad. I understand why you're angry. What do you want to do about it? And she sat back and she thought about it in her little four-year-old head and she said, tomorrow I want ice cream right after dinner. Okay, mom? Don't forget. And I said, okay, I'm not going to forget. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to put a note on the table Right now, we'll make a note, we'll put it on the table so that when we're done with dinner tomorrow, mommy remembers to give you ice cream. How's that sound? She was so excited. So the next day, she has her little experience of ice cream, and guess what? The kid's no, more, no longer angry. So it is in the accepting and the validating of this child's anger that the anger goes away. So anyone who tells you that you don't have the right to be angry is ignorant to the idea that they're minimizing you, okay? So, and all you have to do is you have to wake up and realize what's happening because when someone says to you, don't be angry, you know that's going to piss you off. So what you have to know going into the conversation like that is that they're wrong. No one has the right to tell you not to feel what you feel. Besides that, it's stupid because you already feel it. You already feel it. And now what they're doing is they in not allowing you because they're uncomfortable with anger. See, they don't want you to feel angry because it makes them uncomfortable. See, I'm okay. By the time I had my third kid, I was like, wow, anger is just a thought form. And so, and in accepting it and integrating it, it just goes away. Like it doesn't get locked anywhere. So I'm, I'm rambling. So I'm going to show you my diagram now. Okay. So bear with me, dear ones. We got this whole, you know, backwards thing going on here. All right, so see this line in the center? That represents sort of like let's let's say that that's that's your that's where that's your that represents your emotional line, okay? The the the, the line where where you're going to travel on, okay? So this represents you, and this represents contentment. That contentment. That's where we want to try to hover. We want we want to try to hover around this area um, throughout the day. So. We have to figure out what we can do to always come back to this center. Okay, now on this end of the spectrum, we have thought forms. And see these little squiggly lines? They represent high vibrational thought forms. So when we're being loving to self, that creates a high, that's being carried on a high thought form. Um, when we're being peaceful, that's a high thought form. When we're being creative, that's a high thought form. When we're experiencing joy and happiness, that's a high thought form. That's a high wave. Like that wave is traveling at a high velocity. Velocity. Um, so abundance, acceptance, and all that good stuff. Okay, when we're down here, right, and this just keeps going down into ornery uh, rabbit hole, black hole crap, right? So um, anger, denial, hopelessness, depression, sickness, lack, frustration, resentment, loneliness, desperation, and anger. That, that exists on this side of the spectrum. So what we're trying to do is, so if we are in hopelessness, what we have, that's a very low energy, very low. And that's why we feel so low. That's why we feel so, so heavy. Um, because the, uh, the vibrations that, that these feelings and emotions are carried on, the waveforms that they're carried on are very low energy. Um, waveforms. So the goal is to create higher, higher vibrational thought forms. And we, what's really, really cool, dear ones, is we have the noggin, the brain. The brain lets us do that. The third eye, the, the imagination center. Why did God or whatever create a give us an imagination? 
why so we can imagine and we can create and we can get ourselves out of freaking desperation and up here to somewhere to peacefulness that's why you have an imagination so you can create okay but you can't create unless you step into free will and you can't create unless you decide to create you need action steps to your one you need action steps you have to act on this stuff that I'm trying to teach you okay and if you do your life will change promise guaranteed so this is how it happens you cannot get from here to here in one giant step. You can't. You have to get from here to here on waves. Uh, and what are these waves? On thought forms. On thought forms. So you literally have to become like a surfer and you have to jump from this wave to this wave to this wave to that wave to that wave. So not really jump, but you have to kind of like surf those waves. And this is how you do it with the noggin through deliberate creation. So this is how it happens. So I wake up or I find myself, you know, I discover that I'm an adult child, I'm an alcoholic, and I got a lot of issues, and I'm on the road to recovery. And I'm understanding that my thought, if I stay in a knowing center, if I stay in a high cognitive place, and I accept that all this garbage below the surface is programming, I can continue to move forward by creating thoughts that I want to experience, right? And ideas I want to experience. Okay, I'm getting that. So what I do is I, I, I say to myself, hmm, I'm, I woke up feeling pretty hopeless today. But I know that if I, if, I keep, if I keep working in the thought center of my brain and I use my imagination and I keep, keep looking for thoughts that feel a little bit better than hopelessness, then I could eventually move, 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 move down this line and get to contentment. And I'm really, really close to hopeful. And I'm really, really close to being loving. And, and feeling healthy and peaceful. So that's how we do it. So if we're down here and we're hopeless, we have to think thoughts like, what would make me feel hopeful? What would make me feel loving? What would make me feel creative? What would make me feel abundant? And when we ask our, our brain those questions, what happens is ideas like, well, be loving. Love what? Love your damn plant. Lo lo love your love your sneakers clean your sneakers love love your bed like make your bed like love your closet send your cl closet energy clear it out you know if you live alone you have a cat love your cat really like you know like really uh, enjoy your cat like um appreciate your cat you have four walls i used to um walk around my my home that i raised my three children in by myself after the divorce and I would like touch the walls and I would say, thank you so much for protecting me and my babies. Like, thank you so much for protecting me and my children. You know, I would go to work and I would leave my kids alone sometimes. They were older, but still, it's, it's not nice to leave your kids alone because you have to go make, make, make money. You know, it's great that you can make money. It's great that I had a job, but it was an ambivalent thing. Like, I got to leave these kids alone. And I would just close the door and I would put my hand on the door and say, I would say, thank you, door, for protecting my children. And I would love my house. Um, and so if you want to experience being loving, then you can't do that if you're coming from a place of lack. So you have to find thought forms that help you roll down this emotional line to where you're feeling more loving so that you can create higher vibrational energies. And what will happen, dear one, is amazingly, you begin to attract higher vibrational others higher vibrational experiences, but it cannot happen unless you're working in a cognitive state. You must accept that 90% of what's going on in your head is garbage. Okay, that's not your fault. So don't kick yourself in the butt because that's only going to make things worse. Just accept it, dear one, and begin to move forward. And, and don't, listen, there are things you can control and things you can't control. Your thoughts are things that you can control. So stay in that realm. Let me know how this works for you. Namaste. Thank you.